Hello and welcome to the Marley Bird YouTube channel brought to you by Red Heart Yarns. In this video, we are going to learn part two of a six part series for the My First Sock with Marley Bird. This is a knit along hosted by me, sponsored by Red Heart Yarns. And in this, you learn how to make this really great simple sock. This sock pattern is available for free over on the Marley Bird website. You can click the link right down there below and it'll take you to where you can find each part of this sock pattern. If you haven't had a chance to watch part one of this video series, go ahead and click that link right there and it'll take you to the first video where you learn how to make this really simple cuff and how to use double pointed needles. This is very important that you have done this in order to proceed with this video because in this video we will learn to make the leg of the sock pattern. Along with learning how to make the leg of the sock pattern, I'm going to talk to you about how to really take this sock pattern that we have been working on and change it to make it your own. How to use this sock pattern more like a recipe. And as always, if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to smash that like button. Okay, gather your homework, join me back here, and let's get started on the leg of this really great sock. As I've mentioned, we're going to work on the leg portion of the sock. Now, the pattern is written so that this entire leg portion should be six inches. So if I take my little tape measure here, and I start up here at the top, you can see this entire leg portion is six inches long. If you want to change that up and make it a little bit longer, you absolutely could. If you want to make it a little bit shorter, you absolutely could. But if you want to follow along with the pattern as written, we want to keep this leg portion six inches. And that includes the cuff, whether you did one and a half inches for the cuff or two inches for the cuff, it doesn't matter. This leg portion for this particular sock pattern, I kept it in stockinette so make, to make it very easy as far as the knitting process because you won't have to purl anymore since we will be working stockinette in the round. So let's go ahead, grab our homework and jump in. Okay, so let's get my homework in hand. I will go ahead and pick up my homework and I've done my cuff for a, an inch and a half and I'm ready to start working in the stockinette stitch. So I will go ahead and place the yarn in my right hand if I'm going to throw and I will take my spare needle and begin to just knit all of the stitches. I do want to make sure that as I knit, I'm still really pulling that first stitch nice and tight and I want to make sure I do the same thing with the next stitch. By doing so, remember, I'm making sure that this stitch right here from that needle is as close as possible to that new stitch on the new needle. Then I just go ahead and I knit to the end of this needle and I will rotate my needles. Now, after last week's video, some of you in the Facebook group mentioned you thought when I said rotate clockwise, that meant you needed to knit clockwise, which is not the case. I wanna make sure you all know, all I was saying was you need to rotate your needles clockwise if you are knitting right-handed. Let me show you what I mean. Once again, you'll notice that I will position the needles move the stitches so they're center on the needle I was just working on. And this is what I mean by rotate clockwise. So that way I can get to this needle and begin knitting on that needle. Now I will hold my yarn in my left hand. I'm still knitting right handed, but I'm holding my yarn in my left hand as if continental. So that way those of you who are continental can see how this is done as well. I will simply go into the first stitch, give it a nice pull, and then go into the subsequent stitch and give it a good pull as well. After that, I go ahead and I get down to the end of the row, just knitting all the way. When I get to the end of this needle, once again, I will rotate my needles clockwise, but I'm still only working with two needles and I'm still only going to work um, off of my left hand needle onto my right hand needle. So here we go, I'm going to position my needle move the stitches to the center, and rotate clockwise. 
Okay. Now I want to point something out at this point. Um, as you've been working along through your cuff, you've probably been trying to position your needles in such a way that works good for you. And if you have a rhythm down, great. Disregard anything I'm getting ready to say. But if you're still looking for a way to hold your needles so that they are comfortable for you, let me show you how I hold my needles and how I make sure they're positioned as I'm working with them. Cause maybe it's something that you would like as well. One thing I want you to notice is that the needle I'm getting ready to work onto, this would be my left hand needle, it is resting on top of this needle over here to the left and it's on top of this needle over here to the right. When I go to work into those stitches and I push this into play, my needle is still on top of there. It just makes it easier for me to get into this stitch and when I pull that really nice and tight, see how it just gets real close to that one and it's not um, like above it or cumbersome. This isn't getting in the way. I just find that to be the best position for me. And then I go ahead, knit the next one, make sure it's nice and tight. And then I'll get to the end of the row. You've probably noticed I mentioned that I position the needles before I move the stitches to the middle of my needle. And that is part of the process of what I do as far as my rhythm and getting my needles in the appropriate place. So here we go. You ready? I usually will take my spare needle and put it up there. Then I'll take this needle right here and I will pop it on top of the needle I just finished. Okay. Can you see that? It's on top of the needle I just finished knitting off onto. Okay. Now I take those stitches. I position them to the center and I rotate. If I continue to do that, you can see my left hand needle is already on top of that needle like I like, and it's already on top of that needle like I like. Do you have to hold your needles that way? Absolutely not. It just happens to work for me, so I thought I'd share with you. As I work this particular needle, I want to also point out that I still have my stitch marker down there to let me know that this would be the end of my round. This is the last needle for my round. I have not tucked in my tail either, so I could also use that as a signifier that that is the end of my round as well. After I finish this knit round here, I'm going to go ahead and I will move up my stitch marker. Okay. And all I'm going to do is take the removable stitch marker, undo it, keeping everything the same. And I'm just moving it up just so that it's a little bit closer to the needles and easy for me to see. Okay. Once you've done that, rotate your work and you continue on working in stockinette. Now for your homework, all you need to do is work in stockinette until the leg of your sock measures six inches, just like I showed you. But what if you are the adventurous type like me and you're like, you know what? I, I like the stockinette Marley and I'm pretty comfortable with my DPNs. I kind of want to change it up a little bit, a little bit. What are my options? Well, why don't you join me in this next section and let me show you how to really make this sock your own. Okay, I'm so happy many of you are the adventurous types like me and you want to know how to really take this pattern and make it your own. Well, let's start off with part one. Part one for us was this really great cuff, really simple and using the gauge that I gave you and some simple instructions for knit one purl one ribbing, um, whether you did 48 stitches or 64 stitches, you have a good like pie crust. Okay. So let's use this as like just a staple, real simple pie crust beginning. Now we get to decide what kind of filling do we want to put into our pie? What kind of stitch pattern or color work or whatever we want to do, do we want to do in our pie crust on top of our cuff? Well, that's really where things get fun. You can go ahead and keep this in stockinette like I showed you, or you could do stockinette and maybe do some stripes, do some color work right here. So in this one, I have a cuff that was just like my homework right here. And then I changed colors. So I was using linen and I went to suede, went back to linen, went to suede, went back to linen, went back to suede. And so I still did stockinette, but I just changed colors every seven rows until I got to the six inches. Okay. I could have changed colors every five rows. I could have changed colors every eight rows. It doesn't matter. The point here is that I just made it a little bit more interesting for me. 
if I didn't want to do stockinette or didn't do uh, striping color work, maybe I want to do stockinette, but I just want to make the leg a different color. I could do the ribbing in one color. I can make the leg a different color. And then as we get to the next parts, we could do the heel flap in a different color, the gusset and the foot a different color, the toe a different color. Like you have options. So you don't have to make the entire sock one solid color like this. You could really break it up as you want to. If you don't want to do stockinette at all, here's another option. So this one here is just like what you've been doing, except instead of stopping at an inch and a half or two inches, I continued with my ribbing. So you can see here, I have a really great stretch and all I've done is continue my ribbing all the way down. Now, one of the benefits of doing a ribbed sock like this versus a stockinette sock is it really sort of hides the ladders. So if you're struggling with ladders, they kind of look like runs in your pantyhose, then maybe the rib sock is something you want to go into. Maybe you don't want to do stockinette. You just want to do some ribbing. Well, here's, here's why, okay? When you're working with stockinette, your stitches are nice and flat and everything looks really great, right? And if I had some extended stitches right here, you'd really be able to see them because of the flat nature of the stockinette. But because ribbing has a negative ease, there's a lot of negative pull going on here. If my bladders were placed within this kind of gutter between the knit and the pearl and the knit, it really gets hidden in there. So it tends to hide any sort of flubs that we might have as beginners, okay? The other thing that's really beneficial about using ribbing is if you're using a yarn that's not wool, maybe it's a yarn that likes to stretch quite a bit or it doesn't keep its um, elasticity or whatever it may be, it could be that doing a ribbed pattern would be really great for you. With this ribbed pattern, those of you who have followed me on Instagram probably saw me working on this sock when I was on the plane, but I was working Working on this sock and I <laughs> I actually got this far and I forgot to stop for the cuff and that's why I was like you know what I'm just gonna go ahead and do ribbing and I can carry down this ribbing all the way down the foot of my sock only the top part so we'll go into that but that's something to think about as you're choosing your leg pattern is do you want that to go down the top of your sock as well so you can kind of think about that another thing is you can always take a look at your stitch dictionaries and maybe pick a stitch pattern out that is divisible by four since you're working with four DPNs, it makes it easier, right? Um, and make the stitch pattern divisible that's divisible by four and make that into the leg. Just make sure it doesn't have too much stretch. If you pick a lace pattern, it's gonna have a lot of extra stretch. If you pick a cable pattern, it's gonna be a little bit more cinched in. So make sure you plan for that but it's another option of something you can do. So as I mentioned, you can really use this cuff as your pie crust. And then as you choose what you wanna do for the leg, whether it's stockinette, whether it's ribbing, or whether it's a stitch pattern, you get to choose what kind of filling you put into that pie crust or on top of that pie crust. It doesn't really matter what you do as long as it's what you want and you keep it consistent for both socks if you want them to match. If you want them to be fraternal twins, that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother topic and more power to you. My daughter doesn't like matching socks, so I get it. Um, let's see, so that's really one way that you could really make the socks your own by still using this particular pattern that we're talking about, working six inches total, but maybe you do stripes, maybe you do ribbing, maybe you do a different stitch pattern, maybe you just do a different color. Your choice, just whatever you do, stick with it and, uh, go for it. I think it's great. Now, one thing I do want to point out is many of you have asked me, how do you store your work in progress? And I want to show you this little nifty trick thing here. Um, this here is a work in progress tube by Susan Bates. Let me move these out of the way so that you can see how this works. And you'll notice here that my sock is actually coming out of this hole right here in the tube. And the thing is, my sock is still on some double points. So as I open this tube up, you can see that my double points are in the tube. Here's my extra double point right there. So there's my fifth needle. And then my other four needles are right here on the toe of my sock. You see that?
And so if I want to store this, all I do is I take those double points, I put them into the work in progress tube, make sure my work in progress is coming out that slit, take the other end and cinch it up. And I have a nice little tube that keeps everything really nice and secure, right? It keeps it really great. Um, so these little tubes are available at redheart.com. I'll make sure I put a link right down there in the video description box, as always. But if you're interested in checking these out, these are really super duper helpful, okay? Um, I think that's about it for this week, you guys. Can I just tell you first off how proud I am of all of you in the Facebook group? Um, so many of you have never worked with double points before and you trusted me and you did the no cuss cast on and many of you have your cuff already complete and you're showing it off and it's so exciting to see your success. I am smashing your like button constantly on Facebook because I think it is such a thrill to watch you guys um, really venture into this, this project because it was your request. You asked me to teach you socks. And so the fact that you are really doing it is so fantastic. And the encouragement in there, oh my goodness, so many wonderful, wonderful knitters encouraging one another. I think it's great. Um, as you are working on your socks, whether you choose to do you know, whatever it is you choose to do, please share with me on social media. If you do hashtag Marley Bird, I will be sure to see it on Instagram or on Facebook um, or on Twitter. Uh, I would love to see your works in progress as you go along. And don't forget, during the knit along, there is a chance to win prizes as well. You can find the details about that on the pattern page. And um, I will say one more time that during the knit along, each part of the knit along will be released with each video. So right now, only part one one and part two have been released. The next patterns will be released with each video along the way. If you're catching this video after the fact, after the entire knit along is over, don't worry, you'll have the whole pattern ready for you so you can move from one step to the next. Uh, those of you who are afraid that this six inches is gonna take you a while, I promise it's gonna be done in no time. And don't forget that if you have not had a chance to start your second sock, it's not too late to grab another set of needles, grab your other skein of yarn, and get started. Make your cuff make your leg, and then you'll have both socks done and you won't have to worry about the dreaded second sock syndrome. Okay guys, I hope you're enjoying this knit along. That's it for part two of six of this video series for the My First Sock with Marley Bird, uh, sponsored by Red Heart Yarn. Bye guys. Everything you need to know about knitting or crochet can be found right here on the Marley Bird YouTube channel. Learn with Marley Bird. Visit youtube.com forward slash Marley Bird.